66 million years ago, a meteorite crashed into the Earth at over 70,000 kilometers per hour, causing a massive amount of dust to rise into the atmosphere, a mega tsunami with waves hundreds of meters high, and the extinction of the dinosaurs. But first, let's take a quick look at what happened. Throughout Earth's history, there have been five major mass extinctions, the most recent of which is the Cretaceous extinction, commonly known as the dinosaur extinction, which occurred 66 million years ago. By the way, it would be more accurate to refer to non-avian dinosaurs, meaning those that didn't fly, because avian dinosaurs partially survived and eventually evolved into today's birds. This event was so impactful on the planet that it was chosen as the boundary between two geological eras, the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic, also known as the Tertiary. As we mentioned earlier, this extinction was most likely caused by an asteroid that came from beyond Jupiter's orbit. It had a diameter between 10 and 15 kilometers larger than Mount Everest and would have crashed into Earth at over 70,000 kilometers per hour. The impact created the Chicxulub crater with a diameter of 180k kilometers, making it one of the largest ever observed on our planet. It is located in the Gulf of Mexico, half in the sea and half on land, corresponding to the Yucatan Peninsula, but we will come back to this later. The impact of the meteorite with the ground was extremely violent. The rocky body disintegrated, projecting debris into the atmosphere. Burning fragments and debris entered the atmosphere. They then reached various areas of the world and caused global wildfires. According to NASA reports, it is estimated that hundreds of billions of tons of CO2, sulfur dioxide, and water vapor were released into the atmosphere. All these ashes and dust in the atmosphere blocked a significant portion of sunlight, making it more difficult for plants to grow. This, in turn, created problems for herbivores and, consequently, for carnivores as well. But that's not all. The impact of the meteorite caused earthquakes so violent that they shook the planet for several weeks, with an estimated energy release 50,000 times greater than that of the 2004 Sumatra earthquake, which had a magnitude of 9.1. And finally, as the cherry on top, the meteorite also triggered a global tsunami with waves, hundreds of meters high. In short, it was an unimaginable catastrophe. Of course, we don't know all the details of this extinction. For example, we don't know exactly how long it took for the dinosaurs to go extinct. However, we do know for certain that within a relatively short period, 75% of all species were wiped off the planet. But then, exactly, what went extinct? Because yes, this is usually known as the extinction of the dinosaurs. However, it's not like all dinosaur species went extinct at that exact moment. Some, for example, had already been extinct for a long time, even before the meteorite arrived. Among the dinosaurs that actually went extinct directly because of the meteorite, we find some names that everyone knows, like the T-Rex, the Sauropods, the Triceratops, or the Pterosaurs. But be careful, those aren't actually dinosaurs, they're reptiles, even though they are usually considered dinosaurs by most people. It is interesting to note that, although the dinosaurs were hit hard, the same cannot be said for other groups, such as plants, gastropods, mollusks, amphibians, mammals, and even some reptiles, like lizards, snakes, and crocodiles. Of course, it's not like they had an easy time, huh? And many species still went extinct. But there's a big difference between having some species go extinct and being completely wiped out. This is probably due to multiple factors. First of all, non-avian dinosaurs were generally larger in size. And so, it was even harder for them to find shelter during falling debris or fires. Moreover, small mammals could still rely on seeds and tiny insects to survive whereas large reptiles needed vast amounts of vegetation, which, in reality, was no longer available. So, mammals, as well as birds, for that matter, were able to adapt much better to the sudden changes that our planet had to face. Meanwhile, the dinosaurs, so to speak, failed to keep up with the times. The meteorite, therefore, ended the era of reptiles and ushered in the age of mammals, which have dominated our planet ever since. In other words, without that asteroid, we humans might not even be here today. By the way, just to clear up any confusion, let's clarify something. During the age of the dinosaurs, human beings did not yet exist. More or less, humans appeared on Earth 65 million years after the extinction of the dinosaurs. So, yeah, I didn't mention humans because we're talking about two time periods that are very far apart from each other. Alright, so now we understand what happened and who went extinct. But let's go back to the meteorite for a moment. 
We said that this is currently the most widely accepted theory, but how did we figure it out? The answer, as strange as it may seem, has to do with a small town in Umbria, near Gubbio. Here lies the Batachin Gorge. And in the early 1960s, micropaleontologist Isabella Premoli Silva, along with a Swiss colleague, dated the exposed rocks using planktonic foraminifera. They identified a very distinct boundary between the Cretaceous and the Paleogene. This boundary is marked by a dark red clay layer that is devoid of foraminifera. It is found between pinkish limestones. In these limestones, however, the foraminifera found in the last layer of the Cretaceous are completely different from those in the first layer of the Paleogene. The dark red clay layer, therefore, records the near-total extinction of calcareous plankton in the oceans. In the 1970s, a group of American geologists built upon these studies and began to analyze in detail the rock sequence of the Batachian Gorge. Thus, this place was also visited by geologist Walter Alvarez and his father, Luis Alvarez, who was famous for having received a Nobel Prize in Physics that same year. They focused their attention on the clay layer and decided to conduct in-depth analyses to characterize its composition. They soon realized that this layer was rich in iridium, a transition metal that is very rare in Earth's rocks but abundant in extraterrestrial bodies such as asteroids and cosmic dust. Thus, since the 1980s, the idea that the extinction was caused by the impact of a celestial body from the solar system has gained increasing support. At this point, only one final piece was missing, identifying which body could have caused such a violent and sudden extinction. To solve this question, the first step was to look for a crater. Because if a meteorite caused a global extinction, then it is likely that its crater would be enormous. And most importantly, that some visible traces of it would still exist today. It was soon realized that the prime suspect was located in Mexico. There, in fact, in the 1960s, an oil company had observed a huge circular structure during its explorations, partially on land and partially offshore, which is not particularly noticeable to the naked eye, because it is covered by sediments. But gravimetric analyses, analyses based on measuring gravitational force, make it extremely visible and reveal that it is composed of multiple concentric circles. This is precisely the Chicxulub crater we were talking about earlier. Imagine that initially, it was believed that those marks were the remains of an ancient volcanic structure, even though there were several inconsistencies. For example, there was a high concentration of iridium, consistent with the levels found in the clay layer of the Batachian. Moreover, the concentric ring structure is actually typical of impact craters. In fact, following the impact, the crater becomes liquid due to the high temperatures. The center rises, forming a sort of plateau that then collapses, creating multiple inner rings within the crater itself. Additionally, fragments with a composition similar to those found in the Chicxulub crater have been observed, but at a distance of 3,000 to 4,000 kilometers from the crater. In short, these are just some of the pieces of evidence that allow us to say today, with a good degree of certainty, that the extinction of the dinosaurs is linked to the impact of a massive meteorite. Alright, guys, thank you for following me up to this point. In reality, there are also other theories regarding the extinction, such as the one that attributes it to the violent volcanic eruptions in the Deccan, in India, or a climate change that was already underway even before the meteorite impact. These are hypotheses that have some supporting points but also some weaknesses, so for now, we prefer to focus on the most widely accepted theory. I'd like to thank the Department of Earth Sciences at the University of Milan for their support, and we'll see each other again in the next video. Always here on Geopop, Everyday Science.